I don't even know where to begin. This is a video dialogue. I plan on uh, starting with the fire, just as the devil was created first. So shall Bazakel speak first. I was just interrupted. Knocks and knocks and knocks upon my hotel door. Because somebody out there wants to abuse the power of the police, wants to harass me, send cops to my hotel room, claiming I'm a danger to myself and others. Really? You've told me I've been suicidal since 2001. No scars there. Never been resuscitated. Never worried much about death. Death is but a second, you fucking monkeys. Death is a moment. And you people fear it every day. You people lock your church doors like God is on some kind of schedule of mankind. That God himself, a temple of worship, he couldn't watch and keep over the flock and those that come in. I know you're all fools just afraid of vagrancy and alcoholics and homeless abusing the power of an unlocked church door. But you, you disregard the same God you claim you worship. Should you not have somebody in there all night in case somebody is in need of a nightly prayer? of counsel, of somewhere that they might just sit and pray and think to themselves how they can better their life. No, you'd all like to run around with three or four church keys, you know, have them all attached to your hip, and you're the man, you're the law, you're the one that says when these men can come in and pray to God, and you think you're so special? Show me one human that can outlive a fucking sea turtle. You think you're so modern and so advanced in civilization? You don't even live a quarter of those biblically, biblically spoken of. See, Bazakel, he doesn't want to talk about all the dark side and what's due this land far from grace. He gets tripped up. Problem is, everybody's too busy trying to hunt the big bad wolf to recognize Christ out in the world. Probably 10 million rappers right now think there's some God-appointed devil. They lived a hard life. That they need to go out there and bust the streets and be regulators. God doesn't need 10 million devils. He's already got one. As far as the devil goes, it's his job, his duty, and his point of existence to test you, to tempt you, to push you to the limits. Just as a mighty vase is sculpted by the artist. It is sculpted. Then it is put in the furnace. And then once it's in the furnace, it will solidify and come to its full potential. Whereas it might hold water and serve a purpose and give life. That is no different than any one of you war mongrels out there having our sons and daughters, brothers and sisters fight wars on the other side of the world. When there's lands in this United States you can't wear certain colors or you get harassed, you get assaulted or even shot. You think this is the United States that we're free? I could rifle off 10 cities that are probably gang controlled. And even further than that, there's more mafia control. War? War against Iraq and Iran? All these Afghanistans? Whatever? It's all brainwashing. So everybody that has the desire to kill goes and signs up, swears in, and they go clear on the other side of the world. 
and they're told all oh, these people that George Sr. was in cahoots with, they're now your enemies. And this is this is just the new world propaganda. This is the new world order. War is population control. It's taking everybody that has the desire to kill, is brainwashing them to hate the enemy, and they're clear on the other side of the world in a controlled environment, killing off each other. And how does this serve society a purpose? By the math, they think you'll get it out of your system. That when you come home, you'll think your enemy is afar. That you, you no longer have the desire to kill. That you abuse the commandment and you felt patriotic for it. Well, when the fucking streets of Detroit, when Chicago, when Baltimore, when Cincinnati, when Miami, when any number of United States cities are liberated from all these rappers talking about how many girls they can treat like whores, how much money they got, showing all their money on Instagram, and then fucking they cry when they get fucking robbed by people that are jealous of them. You show your money on social media in large amounts, you're asking for problems. You're stirring the shit pot with a fucking onyx ore. I sit here and tell you that I don't know what to do anymore. Apparently, trying to end war. And sickness, faith heal, all this stuff, it just doesn't matter. I get your shillings on the dollar. I'm considered insane. I'll have you know, when I was going to go into the military, I qualified for every single job, from nuclear to general. And you faggot doctors thinking your gods want to call me insane? It is merely... Because of my intensity of intelligence, my emotions are therefore exploited. These symptoms, you say, well, they can only mean I have a disease. Well, if I'm suicidal, why haven't I made an attempt on my life? Why am I still alive? I've never been rushed to the ER over an OD or fucking slit my wrist fucking to gain attention. I understand and am compassionate to those that cut themselves. I think all they want to do is get their hell over with. They think the more pain that they can live through, the less hell they'll have in the future. They may say it's some chemical reaction that gives them joy. But in their subconscious, they're really thinking, well, how much suffering do I got to do for my errors, my transgressions, my problems? If I sit here and slice a little bit every day, well, hell, by months or years, all my bad karma will be all ate up and I'll be blessed again. Another thing. You people and your Teamsters, your unions, your little worker mafias that look down on people that live off the system. I got a question. Would you work in a fucking society that calls you insane? That says you're a danger to yourself and others. That locks you away in a hospital. That stabs you with a syringe. That causes brain damage so bad that I don't even remember a large portion of my life. I was told by friends they had to walk me like a dog through the courtyard so I wouldn't get atrophy. I can vaguely remember a large manila folder of a lawsuit, me against the state, for several million dollars. I knew upon reading it that I could not go through and try to litigate and win this lawsuit because the powers that be would kill me. Just like others have had mysterious accidents. 
these scientists that try to promote water as fuel, that try to give alternatives to oil, they just suddenly have untimely deaths. And another thing, you fucking idiots thinking that some government is going to put microchips in everybody that gets a fucking vaccine? You need to take an economy class, economics 101. The sheer amount of money and technology that that would take to organize, to put on such a scale, and therefore regulate the human life, the cost of that alone, it would take such a conspiracy of new world order and so much money that I can assure you it is very unlikely that there are fucking nanobots or fucking chips in your flesh. And even if it was, you could find a will and faith with God to overcome it. I've overcome brain death. I had so much brain death in my skull, in my mind. The one eye actually was lazier and rested lower than the other one. When I tested it, it traced at very slow amounts. And now, not the case. My eyes are working faster. My brain's working stronger. I'm going out there teaching people that have had faith for 30 years new ways to look at Christian translations. And why I'm on Christian translations? Where does it serve that a God would create an angel that could overthrow and outdo him. That's that's not how it is. I'm afraid mankind, you've probably heard it before, our father whose art in heaven. Now think about that art. Have you ever been to a theater and seen a play? Have you ever been to a movie theater and seen a movie that inspired you, that taught you a moral or a lesson? Did you gain from that? Do you not see the art that was in heaven, the plays, the acts, the casting out of Lucifer, the biblical documentations? Those were art. Those were plays. And those were actors. And why? To teach you a better way. To test you of your true faith. To make you accept something that you can't totally understand. Yeah, Satan. He's going to go from the once most glorious, greatest, beautiful angel to giving God the middle feather and saying, I'm going to go above you. That makes a lot of sense for fucking people with 10% mind capacity. You all others, you don't have any excuse. Our Father, whose art in heaven. Well, some of those biblical accounts they were just little tests for you, mankind. They were just little plays set out to put pawns and knights and bishops all in motion to see where your true trust, where your true belief shines. But rather you all point fingers and say, we must sacrifice evil instead of sacrificing from yourself, giving yourself sacrifice of time, of effort, not worrying about work, school, relationships, going out there and finding your answers so you believe in a higher power. None of you can tell me that you have a higher power until you can outlive a fucking sea turtle. There is no magic book with every perfect formulation. These are perversions of man and previous Roman control. 
Have you ever heard the abomination of desolations? It's a theory that after Christ's death and ascension and, of course, his resurrection in between, after that, Rome, Caesar, the powers that got proven, they're not the total law of life, death, and the hereafter. They're not the final say of judgment. When they got proven that they can fucking pray to carry a torch, that they should so hope to be of such glory and recant on their previous disbeliefs, their pride let them not fall to their knees and praise the miracle that came from their high treason judgment. Apparently, Rome was a little pissed when Christ rose from the dead and was accounted as alive after their torture and crucifixion. When he was gone, they took it to the soldiers to put swords on scribes' throat and say, you will translate and transcribe what Caesar has decreed. I'd say what? A portion of 10 to 15% at that time could actually read and write? You know how easy it would be? Do you even know or have you even heard about the five or six or seven books that were removed from the Bible? You might be asking yourself why they were removed. Because these assholes that run things don't want you or you or even you two back there to have power. Because if you have power, they can't have power over you. They can't tell you to pay taxes and tithes and tributes. They can't claim your only begotten son and draft him into war. Because if you guys were truly empowered... You could rise above brain death. You could defy the laws of physics and medicine. I'm not bragging, but I got 20 people I could probably look up and ask them to give a testimony of how I made a fucking cloud in the sky disappear. Maybe I should compile a little collage of videos of people talking about it and send it to fucking Bill Gates. Like, I need to come out and, and go out to the world. The power that I'm warning you about is I was the original writer of the screenwrite that led to Armageddon and Deep Impact. When I do not receive acknowledgement, compensation, or power, then I won't have the power to stop Armageddon. It's that simple. If I'm disavowed, discredited, if I'm conspirated against, if they never give me a chance to bring the many arts and teachings I have, I'm going to be sitting here alone. And I'll be like, man. To save the whole world. They're hung up that I didn't have Jesus abs. I didn't have long flowing hair. I didn't have a robe. I wasn't their image of Christ. You all think some great carpenter is coming? Well, lo and behold, the Lowe's Home Improvement Center Christ is here. For I will give you the tools, the supplies, the blueprints and know-how to build your own house. For if you build your own domicile, you will respect it more. You will believe in it more. You will save money. Don't you monkeys want to do that? Y'all think so. Great knowledge that mankind knows 
with their life expectancy in the upper 90s at best. There's some flukes out there that have done a past 100 or 110 or so. But you guys don't realize the pioneers, the patriarchs that founded religion, they lived about five times as long as you people in some circumstances. Now, science may accredit this to the oxygen levels being better, to the foods having less preservatives, all kinds of stuff to discredit all God. But the truth is, this world is far from grace. You have people fighting over the color of skin. You have gangster rappers shooting each other down. Oh, yeah, that's big and bad and powerful. You're a coward. A child could use a gun and take a life. What if the end of war was, if you want to go to war, you want to be a soldier in battle, then you fight hand to hand in gladiatorial combats. None of this bullshit where we have our leaders fight wars. You think you all would be satisfied with seven to ten people fighting a war every couple years or so? And the amount of physical fucking effort and skill that would be in it? You think that would satisfy your desire and lust of blood? Another thing that can't be accounted for, I've had doctors, priests, and those considered faithful not come to a conclusion, but could not discredit the stigmata that I have on my body. From holes you can fill in my wrist that have been accounted to change size and shape and are in perfect alignment as well as mole markings under the shoulder, as well as a mole and a red spot on my foot. And I've always had back problems because it's accounted that Christ had witchcraft cast upon his back as well as the torture done in crucifixion. Oh, I was just so taken back by all you Christians when Harry Potter came to be. You proud Christians thinking you're Christians. Sitting there lashing about, Oh, the Harry Potter's the devil. They said the word magic. They're going to hell. Who are you to judge? Who are you to say? There's nothing wrong with Harry Potter. It's independent. It's inspiring. It's artistic. It's like somebody drinking coffee all day long. And they think they're the little monkey mind. Oh, I'm so glad this isn't cocaine or heroin. Oh my God, this isn't heroin. This isn't cocaine. I'm not some junkie. And they're just chugging that. They're not drinking coffee. They're not doing heroin or, coffee or cocaine. They're fools. Be of what you are, not of what you are not. Matthew 23, Christ appointed duty when he comes back. He's overthrown all you blasphemistic hypocrites that are running the world, that lock church doors, that support wars, that propagate oil in the agenda, that pay great, awesome annual salaries to doctors that they can label people and force medications on them. Claim their symptoms as diseases and they're regarded as gods amongst the community with their power and prestige. That they can come knock on my door at any time, harass me, upset me, because somebody out there thinks I'm a danger to myself or others. You monkeys are a danger to yourself. 
your pride and vanity will be your demise. If you think Jesus blesses your 8K to go to battle, you're a goddamn heathen. You're an idiot. If Jesus blessed your guns, if you were some soldier of Christ, you wouldn't even need to aim. You could point it up in the air, and the bullet would just find your fucking target. God doesn't need you to sacrifice evil. He needs you to sacrifice your time. And again, your effort. He needs you to not worry about colleges or universities or degrees or masters or doctorates. He doesn't want you to go fucking work your fingers to the bone and knees to the break. Perpetuating a, perpetuating a society that has failed, that still has racism, that still has fucking wars. The people are so pushed outside of society that their only recourse is to go into public somewhere and shoot up the place just so they can have their pain acknowledged because nobody acknowledged their pain. Nobody acknowledged that they were outcasts, that they were never understood or appreciated. Maybe you shouldn't be so worried about fucking criminals and start teaching your children real morals and principles of life. One of the most disrespectful, unchristian things I've ever seen is somebody sending forth kids with little silver collection plates during service. Separation of church and state. No church, temple, or place of worship should ever have to deal with currency. If you have such good patrons and people that attend your service, they should donate every material, every supply, and every service and work needed. You shouldn't have to collect fucking tithes and taxes and, and donations in church. And again, you shouldn't send out little children to put little pity and fucking guilt trips on people so they give you more money. There's better ways than money. There's better ways than war. There's better ways than racism. In fact, there's a KKK because there's a bunch of white motherfuckers insecure. I've even theoreticized that the reason of their insecurity is white skin reflects the sun. Black skin or darker skin absorbs the sun. The sun is hell. Have you heard of the lake of fire? It's gone past the point of forgive them for they know not. It is now to the point that I cannot be pushed further. That I cannot be told what my legal and human and civil rights are. These conspirators that are put in my path. These people spying. These people surveilling. Recording data. Transmissions. They're all just cowards. And they admit their cowardice fear. Their fear of my power. My control. In fact, if it will be litigated, litigated by the UN that all weapons are no longer allowed in war I will sign up for 10 combatant fights with anybody that so challenged my principles my country my religious beliefs my teachings my claims 
10 combats. I'd rather die by my hands not being able to claim another's life in my unskilledness of violence and, and fighting. But will I back down from it? No. I don't back down from pharmacological management. I don't back down from propaganda and new world order fucking agenda. It's a shame that most of you react best and the messages really hit home when you're of fear, when you're of intimidation. You think the trumpets at the end times will be some fucking honorable soldiers of war in a battle cry? <laughs> How about this? When the holes of Earth's atmosphere get so big, the solar wind picks up particles and dust. When it skips and blows across the little hole like a bottle of your beer. And yes, I will now say, alcohol is not Jesus' juice. Jesus turned water into wine because there was a wedding. If you try to find Christ at the bottom of your bottle, in each empty can, thinking all oh, alcohol is Jesus juice, you're just somebody who needs to read 30 or 40 of my works and get realigned, be recentered. Because in the center of the word water is the T, the cross, Jesus. When you become a center, your loss of a sinner at the same time. Wow, it's, it's amazing how close those things sound alike. Can you even fathom getting positivity and losing negativity at the same time? You've had 2,000 years to prepare. Yeah, I'm just playing games. I'm just the antelord. The ain't I Christ. Here, trying to end war and end sickness. Trying to reach out to my politicians and tell them ideas of how they can use a tuning fork to create an environment in the body where the body would adapt and survive because it is stronger than the virus or malignant growth within. And they, they did it biblically. They took it even further. Just as Christ said, greater things you shall do. They took my idea and they pinpointed it. And there is technology that those with cancer, those with sickness and virus and abnormal growth can have said conditions targeted after an MRI scan. And then with sonic ultrasound, a wave of energy can be implemented non-evasively and within moments, mere seconds, give even leukemia cells to dissipate and shatter, to disintegrate. But why? I haven't heard that on the news. I still see commercials about, you know, St. Jude's Hospital with a bunch of bald children. That shit's all not necessary. But pharmacological and big medicine, they don't they don't want you all to be cured. They want you to have a never-ending prescription for your depression. Like that does the soul and mind good every day. I was impressed with the medication that if you get the clap you can take one pill and it's all gone. Now that's medicine I can believe in. But you think they're going to give that around the board in all in all circumstances? I'm going to take another fear. 
away from this world, these mankinds. The fear of overpopulation. What if this same God I serve that is empowered, enlightened, and bestows the trust in my heart could shrink you all down in such a nano form. The average cost of a house is $250,000. If you were shrunk down, you could buy a bar, a bar of gold and mold yourself a golden house. All your supplies would greatly your yards would become countries. But you all aren't humble enough to bow down that way before God. You think you're the judge. You think you're the one in control. Pretty freaking certain. I've been saying these things for a long time. And nothing stopped me yet. I can still to this day stare down a cloud and make it disappear. I can still feel the depth that Christ is in, in me, with me, for me. Not your porcelain little plasticine Jesus, but a Jesus so ruthless for peace that he has a song called Monkey with a Gun. And if you just jump to hate and think by saying the word monkey, I mean somebody of pigment, of somebody of color, you're the idiots that need to shut the fuck up and read a little more and lighten the fuck up. By monkey with a gun, I mean mankind is unevolved. They're no different than barbarism Thousands of years ago, violence is the final word. I see in movies and media, so many people sit there and weep and mourn over the death. Where does that deserve an, an honor and afterlife? Shouldn't we be celebrating that these people are passed on? that they have transcended, that they have ascended, whatever. You sit around and cry about it. All you're doing is really admitting that you don't have faith, that you don't believe in their soul, that you haven't understood or realized God. You should be crying at birth, that from the moment of birth, Money is needed to buy water and food and shelter. Do you really think mankind was intended to be in slavery to a society? The society is so far from grace that you don't even know what news you're getting is real or what is fake news. I one time prayed that an angel would read me a book while I slept. I woke up knowing that the dissension of ranks or misinformation is the greatest weapon against any army. From Sun Tzu, The Art of War. If you can make the soldiers lose faith and credit and honor in their ranking officials and generals and politicians, that just by discrediting their leaders, you have affected them more than a knife, more than a bullet, more than a tank, more than a ball. For when they lose honor, when they lose trust, they won't fight as strong. They won't conquer. There'll be less of them signing up. The horror accounts will come back to the mainlands. And it'll diminish. This mankind. They think they know WWJD. 
like they can conceive what a deityic being would do in any situation. They're just so versed in Christ. Christ did not die so you can get drunk, beat your wife, and then get on your knees and ask forgiveness and be forgiven. The sin he died for was the doubt of God, the afterlife, and his spirit. When they questioned him, when they didn't put him in charge of the entire world, when they discredited his king of Judaism, when they judged him, the sin was that mankind thinks they're in fucking control, that they lay down the law, that they draw the lines, that they're the final say of life, death, and the thereafter. When he rose, he proved that no man will ever transcend above God's word, God's law, God's love, God's justice, God's judgment. Another thing, it is not, it's only God that can judge me. You will judge yourself when you go before God. For the way you utter your conversation, the words that you are brought to, will limit or achieve the afterlife that you will be eternally bound to. If you go through your whole life never speaking to God, you're just going to be stupefied. You're not going to know what to say. You're not going to say anything inspiring. You're not going to say anything artistic or poetic or beautiful. Only God can judge. Yeah, the creator of the universe need put you on a scale and weigh it in like it could go either way. But his judgment, yeah. You judge yourself by how you Stand up for your rights. By how you put the devil in his place. By how you lead your country and your children. By how you treat houses considered of worship of God. God's holy temple. And then you got your little monkey mankind keys locking it up. Because you're afraid of alcoholics vagrants or homeless abusing the power of an unlocked door that discredits the same god you claim you serve you should have appointed people there at all hours and even at times you should just let it be because don't you think god will deal with and take care of those that come to him at any hour? You want to call me the Antichrist? Fine. If I get an army, the first thing we're going to do is kick down every locked door and pray for the forgiveness of those that locked it. This is about the time where I think, hey, given my social media and statage, there might be four or five people in the year 2021 who will actually get to hear all this. Not quite the 144,000 and about that. One time I had a vision, a dream. I was in heaven behind God. I saw white, gray hair, white robe, who was sitting on the throne. And before him was a Bible with white parchment and gold letters. I came up around his left shoulder and I said, I want to be this. And touched one word. That word I saw in that dream, that vision, was rapture. want to try me act like I'm going out there running amok 
that I'm just some scoundrel, I'm just some mischievous servant of the devil. Let me tell you about my occurrence and my uh, interaction with the devil. When I was younger, I was naive and dumb, a little promiscuous. And I took upon myself the guilt that a lover I had was struck down because of me having an affair while she was engaged or with another. I was young. I didn't have much faith then. I had some, but not much. And I thought, maybe she went to hell. Maybe she went to hell because of me and my sex, my desire, my lust. So I prayed to God that he would give me a message so that I could go into hell, deliver the message, and with the devil, bargain a deal to save her soul. The vision was vivid. I saw him. I said, you will give me the powers of God or you will cease to exist. The devil is so versatile, so universal, so all-powering. He can give me God's power or cease to exist. Y'all might there know about me been wondering why I don't just go around doing a little simple things. It's because I got fatter fish to fry. I got so many teachings. I have an identity crisis. I don't know why when I was younger in the very act and stage of dying that upon mention and statement Oh my God, is he going to make it? That I saw the light in the tunnel. And the light pushed away the darkness. I have a point. I have a purpose. I have a mission. So now, I'm trying to pay back this vendetta. For God killed me by not letting me die. By putting the pressure that I must do something godly. That I must change the world. That I have a God-given purpose and gift to give unto all or any. I spent nearly 25 years studying science, society, psychology, metaphysics, religion, politics. I don't know what more I can do. I've taken your Star Trek tricoder and instead of a medical analyzing device I've given you the basis that could live to technological immortality and you treat me like some unholy tax collector everybody hates the tax man I'm just some insane invalid running amok shaking up religion Making people believe in a greater Christ. A Lowe's Christ, not a carpenter Christ. Teaching about healing. Putting his life and liberty at jeopardy. With songs called Monkey with a God. Challenging those that have the desire and lust. And will to kill. Try to kill me. It is said, any 
that whoso tastes the light and is spared of death will never taste death again. Your pharmacological management couldn't kill me. The fact that I can even pronounce that correctly. You should be afraid, doctors, heretics, psychiatric fucking fools. It's down to two basic types of people. Those that say hello. Well, those that say hi. And those that say hello. People like to say hi because that's high like heaven, high above, and hello. Like, oh, I'm going to look down and poop on the whole world. Hell is low. I've drawn the line. The only alternative is to ask, what's up? Is that not an innuendo to ask somebody, is God above them? Do they have faith? You people toss around these words and you don't even know the levity and pronouncement of what you call upon. See these teeth? They're not decaying. You know why? Because I don't suck the dick of fluoride with toothpaste that actually takes off an animal and causes you to have cavities and fucking loss of teeth, etc. and so forth. The chemicals they put in there, they tell you, oh, you're going to be a dirty fuck and never get laid if you don't use this toothbrush and scrub every day. And then they put fluorides and fucking chemicals to dull down your senses, to calcify parts of your brain so that you never really have epiphanies or moments of clarity that you just say, yes, sir, and blindly go off into their wars so they can have luxuries and extremes that others would kill for. My problem is, I know I'm from heaven. I know I've been there. But I was taken from memory of it. Because if I was here on this mortal, wretched earth, knowing how perfect, how brilliant and beautiful heaven is, I would suffer on the daily, on the regular. In this world far from grace. <laughs> Literally, if I remembered heaven, I'd be near suicidal trying to get myself martyred so I could leave this world. You know why some of the greatest, most intelligent, artistic, and entertaining people have supposed mental conditions? It's because their understanding, their gnosis, their knowledge has intensified. And therefore, all their emotions have proportionately intensified as well. And then when perceived by others, they're considered to, to have some kind of condition. It's not that these people couldn't make you happy or make you smile. They just fail in taking away your frowns. I'd remark we're close to the hour point. But there's no length or limit of which I can adhere. In fact, let me tell you another story of hell. For two eons, 2,000 years, 
I was stuck in a hell loop. I remember it all being underground, but I didn't know where I was or what happened, and I kept meeting girls and women. Some would take my fancy, some I would court or seduce or charm. And when I went to touch them, touch, like the highest form of worship, when I touched them, they disappeared. And then I started the loop over, not knowing what just happened in this cycle of trying to love, of trying to touch, trying to worship, trying to be and have not. Now, when you understand the totality of how painful a hell that was, I want you to get out your calculators. Because just as greater things you will do, greater hell you will have perpetuating at the rate you are. Not by me. No. By your own conspiracy. By your own lack of regard. By your insulting ties that I am, is my income. By your disregard of my constitutional right to hold a firearm not that I'd want one you want to exclude excommunicate exile me these are all things that sound like me having less power of Armageddon I was told at a very, very young child age the secret message. God knows it's coming. He knows what's up next. I'm about to say it. But you are not the limiter. You are not the translator to tell me exactly what I mean by this message. This message could be one thing for Adam. Another for Paul, two things for Mindy, or three things for all. Blue, blue, eight, one, two. Now I'm just going to wait a second. Again. Blue, blue, eight, one, two. When I was a child, I didn't even know what it meant. But as I grew and reflected back, it can mean various things. Blue is in blue. Blue is in the color blue. Eight. Oh, had some food, so you ate. The number eight, one, hey, I'm number one, or I won the competition, and two, could be the number two, to be going to a place, or to be as also. Just as you cannot litigate my understanding, my meaning, or God's meaning, in totality, nor can you do so with another man and another man's understanding. The mind is like a snowflake, is like a fingerprint. You can't go around categorizing people that fall into a concordance of actions or ideals. You can't treat one person here like another person over here. Those are two different people. If you try to doctor 
to medicate the mind, it should be based on that individual. Not some fucking gully of fucking documents you've had for some hundreds of years. If we were not individuals, we wouldn't have something that was individual of our body. Sacred geometry and limitlessness, snowflakes, wouldn't exist. So I'm at one hour. I didn't go buy a script. I have no notes here before me. I'm thinking this will be a two-part video. I'm going to try and purge and let loose the fire in my eyes, the burning of my soul, and magnify it upon those that test and toil and get credit. I'm in Morgantown, West Virginia. Hmm. Wonder if there's any landmarks of people that are fucking fools for not coming to me. Well, yes, there is, Kelly Michael Donlin. Or the alias I had when I gave away the script to Armageddon, I believe was Z Magician Lover. I sent out to DreamWorks, a film production company of sorts, and I gave them full artistic rights to take my script and do what they want with it. But I told them, I'm giving it also away to somebody else. And it's like a challenge of who you could do better. And lo and behold, in this town, Morgantown, West Virginia, they have a soccer field called DreamWorks Field. Hmm. I haven't seen much on the media with so many, you know, wanting to be some soccer star. But we have Hollywood theaters, you know. There's, there's places around town that they have their little cameras that I believe they panzered up situations. I sometimes reflect and think of that movie where the guy was always being filmed. Everybody else was watching him, but they kept it a secret from him knowing he was being watched. Again. Blue, blue, eight, one, two. I think I'm going to uh, give a segue to my loving side. I'm going to try in these last, I'm going to try and hit the one hour and a half mark on this video. An hour and a half straight laying into you mankind with a righteous fury. When I act like I'm some bitch, like I'm some coward that hides. I've walked away as people have pummeled me. You should be so blessed as trying finding the surveillance of an Exxon gas station and mechanic place. Whereas I was told I'd be better off buying a new car than trying to fix my lavender fucking Pontiac Sunfire. It was at that point I asked the mechanic, well, can I go out in your parking lot and beat up my car that can't be fixed? He said, sure. So I walked over to the car, kind of pissed off I don't have a car, and I fucking spring and punched the driver's window. 
bounce right off of it. I walk around the car and I plot my attack and I get up to the front of the car where the hood is. I take a couple of moments and then I give to a, a short seven foot sprint and dive and jump and do a flying elbow drop on the fucking windshield and put a fucking hole no smaller than this in the fucking windshield itself. There's accounts that I won't burden you with right now and share specific accounts. It's not that I'm not afraid or that I'm coming to full confidence and strength. It's if I don't serve a higher purpose, if I don't have a utopian agenda, if I don't try to give on earth as it is in heaven, that I discredit this God that spared me from death, that I will be silenced, that I will go back to the loop of hell of never being able to touch a woman. I was trying to be a missionary one time, a self-professed missionary. I hitchhiked a few towns south. And somebody came up to me and knew I was on a spiritual journey. And they put me under the conviction of the Holy Spirit and asked me what my point in life, what my mission is. And I was given to say, Mark 4, Matthew 23. Oh, yet the many ways I have sown seeds, and some of them have fallen on fresh fertile ground. Others have found cracks and crevices of which they yet still grow and sprout. Some are eaten by animals, eaten out. And Matthew 23 overthrowing the hypocrite i think i've got that fucking let me check that one up i, I gotta check that one up with an x because i got that a fucking couple times fold it's getting to the point That if I am treated like some kind of excommunicative fucking disciple of the devil alone. That my final grace, my final offering will be to, be to go into these same rough American cities that I have aforementioned somehow getting myself to to have a live performance up there on the stage by myself a little flash drive with my music all it needs one mic no instruments no backup no hype men when I do monkey with a gun well, there could be somebody in the crowd that doesn't understand. It's so proud of their little weapon that it gives them liberty, that it taught them trust and loyalty, that they had cussed, assault, or even shoot me. 
of course, by typical understanding, they would be cowards, cowards to shoot an unarmed man. But a white man say the word monkey and gun in the same sentence, he must be talking about some people that are, are of color or pigment. Like, the white man is the supreme one. Do I worry about getting beat or shot or stabbed? No. I worry a few things in this world. One of them being that I'll give up trying to save the world, trying to teach a better way, trying to cure people, trying to give technologies, science, maths, numerologies, poems, arts, stories, songs, music, all with the gained goal and glory of God. I've been disgruntled that I've been made to think that y'all are just going to act like it's a tough pill to swallow. That you'll come around in your reluctance. That you'll suck it up and just hear me out on my ideals, my ideas, my teachings, my translations. My rhetoric. Maybe the reason I haven't traveled all over the world is because the motherfuckers in this state nearly killed me, took away my rights, and treated me less than a dog. I should file fucking claim with the ASPCA for how they treated me inhumanely on the level and standards of an animal. I don't care who goes viral, what finally reaches the depths of your barricaded monkey minds. I'm done playing games. It's not that I'm done home punches. I'm going to make each and every one of you little fucking whore, war mongrel, fucktards understand how powerless you are with a weapon. How your violence has never led to the kingdom of God. Your vanity. Your lust, your envy, your greed, your lies, your discredits, your non-implementation -implement of medical devices that can save the hair of little children with leukemia. I'll have you know, getting close to that 130 moment. So I'm going to go back with a little something about myself. My firstborn name is Kelly. Because Kelly makes hell itself. Hell. Come on, let me get it in the right angle. I'm going to explain it because this is me and I want to be all proud and artistic. Let me tilt the angle. It's turning the H into a, a hail and then a, a leg offered forward like service. It's the K like that. So it's turning hell into kill. That's why I'm so obsessed with curing this world. with ailing and giving remedy to the pestilence that is mankind. Now, Michael, that's my second name, my middle name. 
I'll have you know. Thou shalt not fear evil, for the devil has no dick to rape you. That's my hardcore Michael. He remembers being in hell, seeing the devil, seven foot tall, red, horns, and no dick. But the interesting thing he had was three bones on each shoulder that came out. Like maybe they could have held wings before or they were just protrusions out from his skin. But that is the number of 666. Charming him, calling two of his sides, both of his sides, to your presence. You think it is some political or leader of the past? Some numerologies of names? Three bones. This has never been depicted. I've never heard anything even close to that. And they just came out right up from their shoulders. I was like, okay, okay. And while I was in hell, you know, I was like, oh, I looked up. And he's like, well, this is the path that you'll probably take. And I was looking at the sun, but superimposed on the sun was the earth. So I don't know if I was looking through the sun, looking at the earth, or if I was in the core of hell, and in the, the center of hell, there's a, a little mini sun. I don't fucking know. But I looked and I saw earth and a map of which I will take. And of course, I had my free will to deviate from such map. And he told me, before you can leave, you have to sign my book. And the last thing I remember seeing the Necronomicon, a book made of flesh. And it might be a little past your generation if you're younger, but it was as if a Michael Jackson video where the faces morphed into each other. I think it was black or white or B&W, something like that. And in the video, one face changed to another. That's what I saw when I looked on this book. And then I took the pen or whatever I wrote with it and I began to write and put my name and fire burned into this book, my signature. You want to act like you're prepared or at the strength to deal with me, to stop me, to keep me at bay, to give me your shillings on the dollar, to treat me like I'm insane. To treat me like I'm violent. To treat me like I'm suicidal. Like some deviant. And Donlin, my last name. That might be easy for some. But let me get you up to the level I'm at. Don is in Godfather. The dawn in Lynn as in linguistics. For my tongue will be like a two edged sword that will cast the devils out. So we got Kelly over Hill, Michael All Powerful over Lucifer, and Donald, the godfather of linguistics. You think this is some kind of coincidence? Did I come to know these things? Some hap chance? You think these are, are just anomalies that you can discredit with science or medicine? And I have other various names. Let me just bring that into a visual fucking understanding for you. On this, I've put all the names that I am associated with, can answer to, have power of, have taught, have shared. 
It's just there, just for reference. Just in case if I get fucking bored. But one of the names that I go by is Azekels. Because I am as a form of Kel. And Kel is over hell. But if you piss me off, you commit transgressions against me, you limit or wound or attack me, I'll have you know I prayed for psychic defense of any attack upon my body. Just a couple years ago, somebody ripped me off, took some money of mine, stole it, came back. Couldn't pay me. So I called him. What in my understanding originally meant ignorant, I called him the N-word. I'm not going to say it right now because I do want some fucking love from all races, some acknowledgement. So I called him that. And I said, I called him that to a, a friend that asked me what, what was up, how I was doing. Oh, I said, some N ripped me off. And this was a white guy, about 6'5", maybe 265 pounds. And he told me, I better watch what I say. Excuse fucking me. Was this man not ignorant? Will he not burn for his treason? So I went on my way, you know, he went on his way. And I go to walk outside and then this guy's out there again. He's with his girlfriend. He's eyeing me up like a fucking, uh, I don't know. Like he's got something to say. And I said, do you challenge me? He said, yeah. I let him have the first punch. I was going to let him initiate. In my mind, I didn't know what was going to happen. My hand flew up and caught his 20-some-year-old punch. Me being in my 40s, caught his punch before it landed on me. I don't know why that's of significance, but he doesn't litigate my tongue, my understanding. It's about six minutes and 30 some seconds. What, what haven't I laid righteous thunder down on? Hmm. Oh, here's a, here's a cute one. Let's bring back the loving side of the love or die, L-O-R-D. The lying in you. Just as high and hello needs shoved down your throat and put in your solar plexus. Simba. Well, that's a acknowledgement of Christ. He's taking sin away. He's turning sin into sim. And the BA for removing an alphabetical, it's the reverse of it. So just as center is over sinner, Simba is over sin. I'm going to leave you in this first segment called the anger and the fury with just one name and when I spell out this name as quick as you can pronounce it as you see fit
G-E-U-S.